بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين the third section of the book is about mafahim, implicit meanings. And here we have some introductory points and then we discuss different types of mafahim. The first point is the definition of mafahim in contrast to mantuq. So, Al Amrul Aval, page 89 in the edition that I have. Al Amrul Aval, Ta'riful Mafhum Wal Mantuk, the definition of Mafhum, which is the implicit meaning or implied meaning, and Mantuk, which is the spoken meaning. Something this is expressly mentioned. Enna Madali Lal Jumal Ala Ghismain. Meaning of sentences are two types. Qismun yasifuhu al-urf bi'anna al-mutakallim nataqa bih. One type is what urf, common sense say, that the speaker has said this, has spoken it. So it's the spoken meaning, something that is explicitly understood from the words. The second type is understood from the speech, from his words. But it is not described as something that the speaker said it. Okay, so it's implied, not expressed clearly. وَلِأَجْلِ اخْتِلَافِ الْمَدْلُولَيْنِ فِي الظُّهُورِ وَالْخَفَاءِ لَيْسَ لِلْمُتَكَلِّمِ إِنْكَارُ الْمَدْلُولِ الْأَوَّلِ بِخِلَافِ الْمَدْلُولِ الثَّانِي Because these two meanings are different in clarity, therefore, the one which is spoken, no one can deny it. The one which is not spoken, there is a chance that someone may accept, someone may deny. Let us give you an example. If the speaker says, When Zaid comes to you, respect him, honor him. There are two meanings. We can understand two things. One is wujubul ikram عند المجي Necessity of respecting Zayd when he comes. And this is the spoken meaning. This is explicitly mentioned. هذا مما نطق به المتكلم وليس له الفرار منه ولا إنكاره This is what the speaker has said and he cannot run away from it or deny it. He has to accept and be committed to this. That's another thing that's, you know, can be uh, nas, can be zahir, but what is important is that this is said. He cannot say, I didn't say this. But then whether he meant it seriously or metaphorically, then that's another issue. وَالْآخَرْ But there is another thing that might be understood, which is not you know, explicitly mentioned. And to say, okay, if he comes, I have to respect him. If he doesn't come, then I don't need to respect him. So this part that if he doesn't come, you don't need to respect him. This is mafhum. This is implicit meaning. This is something which is not said expressly, 
but is implied by what is said. Wal-akharu, the second meaning is Adamu wujub al-ikram in the Adam al-maji. Ikram is not obligatory if he doesn't come. This is understood from the speech, but it's not that clear and explicit that he cannot deny. A speaker may say, no, I didn't mean this. He can run away from it in different ways. He can say, I didn't mean this. I don't accept this. Fal avalo madlulun mantuqiyun wa thani madlulun mafhumiyun. The first meaning is mantuq means what is spoken. The second is mafhum is what is implied. Wa la alla ma zakarna huwa muradu al hajbi. One of the scholars of Arabic sciences who has also tried to define some terminology of Islamic sciences is Hajabi. Hajabi when talks about mantuq and mafhum defines them like this. He says al mantuq ma dalla alayhi al fi mahall al He says mantuq is what is indicated by the term in the context of a speech means something that has been said al mafhum ma dalla alayhi al it is indicated by the term but not in the context of a speech means it's not said it's meant it's implied so maybe hajabi also says the same thing as we said in any case the result the conclusion is أنما دل عليه اللفظ في حد ذاته على وجه يكون اللفظ حاملا لذلك المعنى وقالبا له فهو منطوق whatever is indicated by the term in itself in the way that the term conveys this meaning and carries this meaning this is called منطوق وَمَا دَلَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّفْظِ عَلَى وَجْهٍ لَمْ يَكُنَ اللَّفْظُ حَامِلًا وَقَالِمًا لِلْمَعْنَى وَلَكِنْ دَلَّ عَلَيْهِ بِاعْتِبَارٍ مِنَ الْاِعْتِبَارَاتِ فَهُوَ مَفْهُومٌ Whatever is indicated by the text, but the text doesn't contain and carry that meaning directly, it is implied in a way through some considerations that is called مَفْهُومٌ Okay. Now, we have to remember that mantuq has also different types. Mantuq, in a logic, you must have studied this. Ad-dalalatul mutabiqiyya, ad-dalalatul tazamuniyya, ad-dalalatul iltizamiyya. Tanqasimu ad-dalalatul mantuqiyya ila aqsamin salasa. Okay? The dalala indication, which is based on the spoken word, comes in three types. al mutabaqiyya by correspondence. Mutabaqiyya is when the term is indicating the meaning 100%. Mutabaqiyya means they match. Father? No, no, no. That's a, no. That's another issue. Exactly what can be understood from the text, it is meant. For example, you say ensan and you mean ensan. But sometimes you say ensan and you mean half of the meaning, like heywaniye or nateqiye. This is tazamuniye. المطابقية وهي الدلالة اللفظ على تمام المعنى when the term indicates its meaning completely what is the meaning 
all the meaning completely is meant. You say insan and you mean insan, not half of insan. When we say a man came, it means an animal came and speaking came. A head came, a neck came, and two hands came. All are the Lalate Tazamuni. Because part of the meaning. Vahiya Dalalatul Laath ala juz il ma'na. Valtezami. We have also Dalalate El Tezami, which is by implication. Vahiya Dalalatul Laath ala lazim il ma'na. For example, when you say insan, you know that insan is contingent, is mumkin. But imkan is not the complete meaning of insan and it's not part of the meaning of insan. But you know that insan definitely is mumkin by mulazima, by implication. Dalalatul laf ala lazim al ma'na. What is implied by the meaning of the term? Val. Ulayan. Ula is the female for Aval. Al Awal Al Ula. And then if it is Muthanna dual, we say Ulayan. So the first two means the first two Dalala. Two Safani bit Dalala til Mantuqiyata Sariha. The first two are described. As Dalala indication, which is spoken and which is Sari explicit. The one which is by implication is called unexplicit, something which is not explicit, it's not Sari. Then the one which is not Sari, which is Lazim has three types. Maybe it's a bit too technical. I hope it's not difficult for you. So there are three types of Dalalatul el Tezamiya. Okay, three types. First, al madlulu alayhi bi dalalatul iqtiba. Something which is indicated by implication through iqtiza means something that without which it's not intellectually possible or it doesn't make sense something that you need it in order to make sense of it for example Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a famous hadith, hadith al raf hadith al raf he said, an ummati tis'ah. Nine things are removed from my nation. al khata'u wal nisyan. One is mistake. The other is forgetfulness. Okay? So, when he says these nine are removed, does this mean that they don't forget? They don't make mistake? Certainly they forget and they make mistake. It means they are not punished if they make mistake, if they forget. So, rofa'a here means rofa'atil mu'akhadatu ala hadi tis'ah. When we say these nine are removed, means they are not held responsible for these nine. They are not being punished for these nine. Not that these nine are really removed in the sense that they never, you know, forget. They never make mistake. فَإِنَّ الْمُرَادِ رَفْعُ الْمُؤَاخَذَةِ عَنْهَا What is meant by this, by implication, is that they are not going to be questioned and you know, judged and punished by these nine. Wa kanal kalamu kadiban. Otherwise, this kalam is not correct. Why? Because 
the wujud al umur thalasate the kata because these things are there al khata and nisyan they are there ma okrahu ma storu ilai they are there so we have here to assume that something like muakhaza is meant another example the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam told their father Ya'qub if you are not accepting what we say was'alil qaryata allati kunna fiha ask the village in which we used to be what does it mean ask the village means ask the people of the village because you cannot ask the village ask the people of the village so if you don't assume that there was people this sentence is not correct another sentence someone has a slave a person tells him a'tiq abdaka anni ala alfin release your slave on my behalf for 1000 for example dinar release your slave anni on my behalf ala alfin for 1000 dinar what does it mean It means that first sell it to me for 1,000 pound and then uh, 1,000 dinar and I'm going to free him afterwards because without him owning he cannot free him free this slave Ma'anahu Malek Holi ala alfin give it to me make me the owner of him by 1000 dinar that you take from me thumma or taqhu then i will release him why we interpret it in this way is la yasihu al itq shar'an illa fi mulk you cannot religiously free a slave unless it's under your ownership okay so in all these three cases, Rufa'an Ummati or Was'al al Qarya or A'tiq Abdaka Anni, we understood by implication that there must be something so that this sentence can be rationally or religiously acceptable. Yes. Because, because this is uh, not something that we are talking according to the law of a state. We are talking according to the law of religion. So this is something that by religious law you need to observe. Sometimes it's implied, but bidalalat tanbi means a kind of warning. A kind of kind of giving you you know uh, notice warning so it's not something that the truth of the sentence depends on that but you need to consider something here which is not mentioned but meant like a cause for example a person asks Imam alayhi salam he says Bi'tu samaka nahar. You know, sometimes you go next to a river, you see fish in the river. So, if someone wants to sell fish, he has to <coughs> catch those fish and sell. Someone wants to be clever, so he finds someone who is not experienced. He says, You know, you see that fish? I sell it to you. So this person gives money and then he has nothing. Or maybe a child, you know, a person who is not 
experience, so he wants to deceive him. So he said, to nahr. I sold the fish in the river. Imam said, Batal al This selling is void. What do you understand from this? Uh, from this, by implication, you understand that you cannot sell something that you have not have control over it. Okay? You must have Qudra ala taslim Control. You should say that I'm able to give it to him. Even if it was your fish, imagine you had a fish, then run away to the river. It's your fish, but still you cannot sell it. Because you have to have control over it so that you can submit it and hand over it to the buyer. What's the difference? Yeah. You had a bird, for example. Now the bird has run away, it's in the sky. You say, I sell it to you. <laughs> no. Not only ownership is important, but also al qudratu ala taslim. You have to have ability to submit it. Okay? So this is understood by implication. The third type, something which is not said, it is meant, but again, it's not iqtaza, it's not tanbih, but it still can be understood. And I want to ask you quickly, what is the difference between the second and the third? But first, let me explain the example, then I ask you what's the difference between the two. But first, listen to the third. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about pregnancy and then looking after the child mother undertakes pain and trouble for 30 months six months of course this doesn't divide another ayah divide it says pregnancy carrying and then after that, 30 months. Means two and a half years. In another ayah says, mothers foster their children two complete years, which is 24 months. So if we put these two together, we realize that the minimum pregnancy is six months. It's possible to have six months as pregnancy. So how did you understand this? No, no, I mean, what's the difference between this and the previous one? Why we say this is Dalalatul Ishara, that is Dalalatul Tanbi. What do you mean? Like, there's a selling fish in the river, you don't have that. No, that's not the, that's the example. No, what's the difference between the second type and the third type? In the second type, without, please listen very carefully. In the second type, without coming to this conclusion that the ability to hand over is a condition, the sentence doesn't make sense. In the third, the sentence makes sense when you say it's 30 months. Maybe you don't think of minimum of pregnancy but then when you put them together you can make another conclusion but that conclusion is not necessary to be in your mind when you say the first you understand when you say you cannot sell fish in river it definitely means that the speaker knew that Ability to hand over is needed, is a condition. He was mindful of that, and because of that, he said this. But when you say pregnancy and looking after for 30 months, maybe you didn't think, 
or the speaker didn't think about minimum of pregnancy. But by implication, we understand because we put it next to another verse and we come to that conclusion. So there are different types of mantuk. All of them are still mantuk. Mafhum is different. Mafhum is. This is also. No, mantuk. Still, this is mantuk. Because it is something that is understood from the text, from what has been said. It is, has to be so obvious. But mafhum is something that which is not that obvious. The third point. The question in the discussion about mafahim is sogravi. What does it mean? You know sogra and kobra. Yeah? Minor premise, major problem. Sometimes you have problem with kobra, which is a general rule. Sometimes you don't have problem with the general rule. You have problem with the case. Okay, for example, we know that blood is najis, but is this blood on my shirt or not? This is sogravi. You don't have problem about what makes wuzu void, but you don't know whether your wuzu is void or not because you don't know those things have happened or not. This is called sogravi means our problem is not in the general rule. Our problem is in the particular case. With respect to mafahim, whether it's in mafhum al shart, mafhum al laqab, mafhum al was, mafhum al istisna, mafhum al adad, all different types of mafahim, our question is whether those mafahim exist or not, whether we have such mafhum or not. Otherwise, there is no doubt that if there is mafhum, it's acceptable, it's hujja. But there is such a mafhum or not, that's the question. So Cobra is the general rule, Sogra is something which is a case for Cobra. Yeah. Inna neza fi bab al mafahim Sogravi yun la Cobravi. The debate, the question in the discussion about mafahim is about case, not about the general rule. Anna madar al huwa For example, all the discussion is built around this point. Hal al qawaya shatiya mafhumun? Is there mafhum for conditional sentences or not? If there is mafhum, then we don't have doubt that mafhum is hujja. The question is, is there mafhum or not? أما على فرض الدلالة والانفهام العرفي فلا إشكال في ذلك. But if we accept that there is such thing as مفهوم and orf understand مفهوم, then there is no doubt that it is valid. In other words, النزاع في أصل ظهور الجملة في المفهوم. The debate is about the very idea that it has مفهوم or not. فمعنى النزاع في مفهوم الجملة الشرطية إذا سلم أكرمه when he says سلام respect him is is جملة شرطية here without any evidence indicating that حق the decree of إكرام is removed when there is no condition he says if he says سلام respect him does it mean that if he does not say salam, you don't need to respect him? You don't need to respect him, not that you must not respect him. That's not mafhum. Mafhum is intifa ul huk. So if condition is fulfilled, you have to respect him. If condition is not fulfilled, can we say that responsibility is not there? You don't need to respect him. Those who believe in mafhum or shah, they say yes. We can say that if he doesn't say salam, you don't need to respect him.
اما بعد ثبوت دلالت ها علل مفهوم but if we accept that it indicates this مفهوم and it has ظهور its outward meaning is this لا نزاع في حجیت we don't have any doubt about its validity و من خلال هذا البیان یظهر وجود التسامح فی قولهم مفهوم و شرط حجت اولا so he says from this we understand that what they say about whether مفهوم is حجه or not is a little bit not accurate yeah it's not very accurate way of explaining the question is not مفهوم و شرط is حجه or not the question is do we have مفهوم و شرط or we don't have مفهوم و شرط because if we have مفهوم و شرط it is حجه Okay. Al-amr al-rabi'ah. This is easy for you. This is something you are already familiar and inshallah easy for you. If you remember we said we have two types of mafhum. Mafhum al-muwafiq and mafhum al-mukhalaq. Do you remember? Mafhum al-muwafiq is when both what has been said mantu and mafhum comply they match for example both of them are from the same type mukhalifa means there is contrast let let me give you an example for mukhalif then the other one is easier <coughs> for example In Surah Isra, verse 23, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who have parents who are very old. When one of them or both of them who live with you, they become very old. Don't tell them, I am tired, I am bored. Okay, when someone cannot say to his old parents that he looks after them or she looks at them that I am bored, I am tired, by awlaviyya, by priority, we understand that he cannot do anything more than that. For example, na'uzu billah, to, to hit them. You cannot do anything more than that by awlaviyya. This is not qiyas. This is something that 100% can be understood. Okay? So, this is called mafhumul muwafiq. Because both of them are the same type. La taqul is nahi. La tadrib, for example, is also nahi. Don't beat them. Don't hit them. Both of them are of the same type. But when we say, if you see an alim, respect him. And then we say, if you don't see alim, you don't need to respect him, for example. Or if you see an alim who is not muttaqi, you don't need to respect him. Then one is respect him. One is you don't need to respect him. So it's mukhalafa. They don't match. Inna al-hukma. So please look at the text. إِنَّ الْحُكْمَ الْمَدْلُولَ عَلَيْهِ عَنْ تَرِيقِ الْمَفْهُومِ The verdict, the ruling which is indicated through mafhum, if it is muwafiq, means it's in compliance, it matches فَسِنْخِ in its type الْحُكْمَ الْمَوْجُودِ فَالْمَنْتُوقِ it matches the same verdict which is in what is spoken. This is called mafhum muwafiq. For example, both of them are nahi. Both of them are wujub. Like, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفٍ This is nahi. By priority, you understand that it is also prohibited to hit them. أَمَّا لَوْ كَانَ الْحُكْمُ فِي الْمَفْهُومِ مخالفاً في السنخ للحكم الموجود في المنطوق But if these two hooks are different One is Amr Wujub The other is Adam Wujub This is called Mafumul Mukhalifah 
and there are different types of mafhum al mukhalif mafhum al shart you know jumla al shart al jumla al shart conditional sentence in ja aka zaydun fa for example or iza ra'ayta aliman muttaqiyan fa this is conditional sentence and if it has mafhum means that you don't need to respect him if you have not seen or uh, has not come to you that pious scholar has not come to you mafhumul wasf like iza ra'ayta rajulan aliman mafhumul ghaya ila kaza ila layl atam siyama for example ila layl mafhumul has for illa or innama ma and illa or innama mafhumul adad when he says do this many number so does it mean that more than this many number is not necessary pardon yeah but that's not a ruling yeah that's مفهوم العدد so مفهوم اللقب لقب is when you have a مشتاق without موصوف عالم without for example رجلا عالما if you say رجلا عالما it's وصف if you just say if the writer عالما this is لقب like a title so there are six types of مفهوم مخالف that we need to speak about them مفهوم الشرط، مفهوم الوصف، مفهوم العدد، مفهوم الاستثناء، مفهوم اللقب. These are all uh, types of مفهوم مخالف that we need to speak. The first one is مفهوم الشرط. But I think you might be tired. Are you tired? Or, or you are okay? Pardon? Very difficult. It's hot. Yeah. Let me explain, but I don't read. We, we read it next week, but so that you have something in your mind for preparation. Of course, we had it in the previous book. My Pardon? Apart from Black of We explained five of them, but you said we explained Yes. Oh, yeah. My Fumushat is when. You have a conditional sentence. And this conditional sentence is not for explaining a subject. For example, sometimes you are told if you are given a son, do circumcision for the son. Okay, this is wujubul khitan, necessity of circumcision for the son. We don't discuss about mafhum or shart for this type of conditional sentence because it doesn't make sense. For example, if you are not given a son, you don't need to do circumcision. Of course, when you don't have a son, <laughs> there is no subject left that we want to discuss about it so sometimes conditional sentence is to create the subject and then a hope comes but without this there is no subject so when subject is removed then there is no need to talk whether hope is still in effect or not okay we need to talk about something like, for example, we say, <laughs> If Zaid comes to you, respect him. If Zaid doesn't come to you, but still Zaid is there, do you need to respect him or not? <coughs> there must be something left. Also, there must be a causal relation between shart and jaza, between condition and what is dependent on condition so if they are just by coincidence then again we don't talk about it 
Also, there must be exclusiveness. If there are other conditions through them, also the conditional can happen, then there is no mafhum. So it has to be when mozu is there, taratub is there, and hasar is also there. Inshallah, we will explain it next week. Just to have it in your mind, and if you can study in advance, so that when you come, inshallah, you are ready. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين.